Please come in and take your seats. Accompanying us on the Star Spangled Banner this evening is Mr. Greeley. Please rise, face the flag. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Mr. Greeley. Good evening. Welcome to our second night. This evening we're going to have some precinct meetings. Precinct 1, these are all going to be, well, if they weren't already held, at 7.45, they're going to be held at the break. So if you haven't had your precinct meetings, precincts 1 through 7, um, have them at the break. I know precinct 3 is going to be out here. The other precincts will be 1 in the corridor outside the clerk's office, 2 also outside the clerk's office, 3 and 4 in the parking lot, 5 <laughs> over here in this corridor, 6 out front and seven over in that corridor. Seven's done, perfect. Four's done. One's done, oh, well, we need your pieces of paper. Bring them up at the break. Oh, you got them all? Bring them up and give them to Stephanie at the break, thank you. Um, are there any town meeting members who have yet to be sworn in? Please rise. All new and returning town meeting members, if you haven't been sworn in, please rise. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I will participate fully and will fairly evaluate all matters before town meeting. And vote in the best interest of the town. I support free speech and will treat others with mutual respect and will conduct myself in a civil manner that is becoming an elected town meeting member. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me as a town meeting member of the town of Arlington in accordance with the bylaws, the town manager act, and the general <coughs> laws of the commonwealth, so help me God. Okay, thank you. Um, Monday night we did pretty good, but considering what our oath of office um, conduct myself in a civil manner the becoming of an elected town official, parts of last Monday's debate, one of our members in particular, um, in my opinion, went beyond the civility pledge that we all take. Uh, I asked a particular member on three occasions to cease, um, but he didn't. That's not the kind of conduct, conduct we want to have at our town meeting. We want a civil discourse. We want to discuss the issues. We don't want to discuss the de proponents or the motivations of proponents. It's the issues that we're here for, the Warren articles, and the votes that are in front of us. 
That's what we should be discussing. We should keep it to that. Please, let's be, do that. It makes for a more harmonious meeting. We can get more done if we're not fighting with each other about mean words. I mean, my wife's a preschool teacher, and she tells the little kids that. You know, we can't be mean to each other. I feel that I shouldn't have to say that to a, this group. We're all adults. Let's act like it. Um, and let's keep on scope. Uh, there's another member who I know about his cookie eating habits. I really don't need to know about someone's cookie eating habits. It's not germane to the issue. We have a lot, we have a several articles this time that are going to have some debate in them and we can move through them if people keep to scope. So please, let's try and focus on those two things. Um, the other thing I want to mention is we did have some clicker usage issues. So I'm, I'm trying to get better. I'm going to explain what we're going to do. Before each vote, I'm going to say, ask if you all understand. If you don't, let me know. I'm going to say, one is yes, two is no. Are you ready to vote? That will cue the clock to start. I'll say vote. So you can see, I made a little slide. One is yes, two is no, three is abstain. When you press your button, you should get a reply in your window, yes, vote received, no vote received. If you don't, press it again. You will get the, the, the response. Don't keep pressing buttons if you're, vote, you're happy with your vote. Um, one of the members, one of the issues was he didn't understand and he pressed the delete button. Well, we don't use those buttons. We only use one, two, and three. All the other buttons are non-functional. So if you want to undo a vote, you don't press delete, you just press the vote you want. Um, that's about all I have to say. Mr. Greeley? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is requested that members of the Board of Selectmen, elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads of town, staff, superintendents, schools and staff, committees, commissions, boards of the town, Minutemen Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and Superintendent, members of the Electronic Voting Committee and staff, members of the General Court representing Arlington, also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted upon by this meeting, representatives in, of interested parties of Article 3, and representatives of the news media be permitted to sit with the annual town meeting in closure. Uh, so moved, and I want to amend that, that it's going to apply to all the future meetings of this meeting, so we don't have to do that again. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Moderator, with your permission, sir, there is uh, someone who's with us here tonight, uh, one of our directors who was unable to be here Monday night. With your permission, sir, I'd just like to introduce an individual who has, for the past 13 years, served as our comp troller. She has been 25 years with the town of Arlington, 37 years in all of municipal service, and unfortunately for the town of Arlington, she has announced her retirement, but she wanted to spend at least one more town meeting <laughs> before leaving us. Please welcome Ruth Lewis. Ruth, stand up. Thank you, Ruth. Ready, Ms. Moderator? Yep. Uh, it is moved that if all of the business of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Monday, May 4th, 2015 at 8 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? He was so moved. Any announcements or resolutions? Oh, Mr. Tosti. You all should have uh, Minuteman budgets. Uh, there's more at the back of the table. Uh, as you know, the superintendent has to go to 16 towns. Uh, it's one of the more arduous parts of his job. Uh, so we're planning to bring up the Minuteman budget on Monday. Thank you. Which night? Monday. Monday? OK. Mr. O'Connor? James O'Connor, Precinct 19, your assistant town moderator. I wanted to point out there are two pages in the back of the hall. This page here that has contact information is used by the town clerk. I know there are more than 10 new members of town meeting, 
and there are other people that have had changes. If you complete this form and get it to Stephanie or some of the staff in the town clerk's office, they will update it and then you'll be able to be on the town meeting list. Not the email list, but the list of members with correct information. This morning at 7 a.m., I removed everyone by unsubscription from the town meeting at arlingtonlist.org list. That caused some confusion because people didn't understand, even though for the past several weeks, and last week I stated that the earlier date of when everyone is registered, or April 27th, I will be terminating that list so that the efforts of the town staff um, under Joan Roman and the moderators will be merging into the town meeting news list. So for those of you that got an unsubscription notification this morning, that was to give you a little alert if you hadn't already signed up to the town meeting newsletter list to do so. The page is in the back and as some of you know, I hate to say this, but if you have cookies blocked on your computer, you may have a problem with the confirmation notice and the confirmation email. If anybody has a problem, you can let me know. I have an iPad here and I can register people, which I did the other night for people that came to me. There's also Joan Roman, if you contact her, one of the town meeting members said to me this morning, I had trouble, I was getting some conflicts with it, and it was resolved. So the town, John and I, and Joan Roman are working very hard to get this system all efficiently operational. So please bear with us, but that's uh, what it asks you to be aware of, is to just update the information with the two sheets that are in the back of the hall. Thank you. Any other announcements or resolutions? Ms. Olzinski? Angela Olszewski, Precinct 17 and Chair of ATED. We just wanted to let you know that we'll be opening the Visitor Information Center on Saturday for the season. Um, the plan is to have it open Saturdays and Sundays, weather permitting. Um, if you are interested in volunteering, you can see Ted Peluso or me here, or you can email us at arlingtonted at gmail.com. Announcements and resolutions, Mr. Jamison. Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Thank you, Mr. Moderator and Co-Chair of the Recycling Committee. You should have all gotten the little doodad here in the back that Community Collection Day is the 9th. We hope to get out lots more information on the web. And as you saw beforehand, uh, we'd all appreciate, as well as the staff that takes care of the room, if you leave it clean and recycle your goods afterwards. Thank you. Ma'am. Oh, the Arlington High tennis girls are outside selling cookies again at the break before I forget to tell you. Kate Lucian, Precinct 20. Mr. Moderator, may I invite Arlington resident Maya Gins to speak about her townwide cleanup? Who? Arlington resident Maya Gins. What's she going to speak about? Her Arlington townwide cleanup event on May 9th. All right. Yep. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. I just wanted to uh, make you aware of an event we are having on May 9th. Um, from 9 to noon. It's a town-wide cleanup. I'm sure some of you have noticed that this winter has left Arlington quite littered, um, and it's a lot for any one small group to do, so we invite you to come join us 9 a.m. to noon at the Farmer's Market uh, parking lot um, on uh, Mystic Street. You can get a bag, gloves, um, and we'll be having coffee and snacks. And uh, this is a great way to show your support for Arlington, and it's also a great opportunity for kids to have a volunteer experience. So I left some flyers at the back, and I hope all of you can join us. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is for announcements and resolutions. Mr. Greeley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. On Sunday, May 3rd, Arlington's Diversity Task Force of Vision 2020 and the Poly residents of Arlington will be holding a candlelight vigil to show support for those whose lives have been affected by the devastating earthquake. 
The vigil will be held in front of Arlington Town Hall from 7 to 7.30. Some candles will be available. Participants are encouraged to bring their own. If you wish to donate to the relief effort, we will have a moment when you can donate via your smartphone or write a check to a recognized charity chosen by the Nepali residents. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's it for announcements and resolutions, no more? Okay, any, uh, Article 3, any reports of committees? Mr. Billifer. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move that the report Don't of speak the Speak right into the microphone, Mr. Billifer, and introduce yourself. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move that the report of the Retirement Board be received. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is so received, sir. Good evening. I'm John Billifer, and I'm here on behalf of the Arlington Contributory Retirement Board in my capacity as chairman to briefly summarize the report just received. Thankfully, most of you will say I will not read the entire report to you, but would like to highlight the key points. The Retirement Board oversees two major funds, Arlington's retirement assets and the other post-employment benefits known as the OPEB Trust Fund. I wanted to take the opportunity to review some important information on each. Back in 2007, the Retirement Board was quite aggressively lobbied by town meeting members and some town officials to transfer the town's retirement assets into the state fund called the Pritt Fund. This fund uses riskier investments in comparison to the portfolio in which the board previously had our assets invested. Over the years, the Retirement Board has opted for a conservative approach to the investment of retirement assets. A riskier portfolio, although it may yield a higher return in the short term, historically results in a greater loss during a market downturn. However, after much debate back and forth, and since the proponents felt so strongly about their position, and since the town meeting is the body that votes the money to fund Arlington's retirement program, the Retirement Board eventually agreed and voted in July of 2008 to transfer Arlington's $140 plus million dollar portfolio into the state Pritt Fund. Shortly thereafter, the stock market took a precipitous You're and reading. historic plunge, reducing the value of Arlington's retirement assets by 40 plus million dollars. A state retirement official estimated to us that Arlington lost $7 million more during that downturn due to the risky estate portfolio. Furthermore, now that we are locked into the Pritt Fund, Arlington cannot have any management control over our investments until we reach the 65% funding level. For this reason, and as outlined in our report to town meeting, the board is continuing to recommend that the OPEB Trust Fund remain in the current investment portfolio. We would like to point out that although the gains are slightly higher over the past three years with the state fund, a current, more conservative investment plan is a sound one. Another consideration is the town's lack of control over decisions regarding our assets. With regard to the retirement fund, we no longer have the ability to recommend changes in investments and adjust things according to financial forecasts. We are locked in until a 65% funding level is reached, and that is not a good place to be when it comes to our future. At least after the 65% level is reached, the retirement board members in office at that time will be able to monitor the state's performance on a month-to-month -month basis and transfer the assets to a private investment firm if it is in the best interest of the town to do so. Arlington is a community that prefers to have control over our own destiny and make our own financial decisions. I have always held that as a strong principle, 
both as our former treasurer and now as the chairman of the retirement board. It is our job to be a watchdog over the assets of our employees and retirees, and that is what the board intends to do. In closing, Mr. Moderator, I'd just like to take another second to thank the town meeting, town officials, and particularly the finance committee for the cooperation we have enjoyed in the past years. We cannot always agree, but it is hoped in the future when we do disagree, it will not be in a disagreeable manner. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Mr. Billifer. <laughs> Mr. Schlickman. <clears throat> Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9 and Chairman of the School Committee. Rather than make a presentation under the budgets uh, article, we'd like to do our seven minute presentation at this point with the permission of the moderator. Four minutes, unless uh, you get their permission. Uh, with, with the permission of the meeting, we're, we'd like to do our presentation to town meeting now rather than within the budget article, so we'd like but, to request but, seven minutes. Well, if it's a report of a committee, they could do it, but if they want more than four minutes, they got to get the meeting's permission. Yes, uh, we're asking for it. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor to give them seven minutes as opposed to the four, which Mr. Schlickman's article so gallantly put in the other day. All in favor of seven minutes, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Mr. No. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, but I, by fiat, gave us four minutes anyways. So I was, the, mo the chair was unclear on the vote. Let's do it one more time. All in favor of seven minutes, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. You have four minutes, sir. Uh, very briefly, then, I want to introduce the members of the uh, committee. Uh, Bill Hainer, Precinct 2, is uh, Jennifer Seuss, Precinct 3, Cindy Starks, Precinct 8, Jeff Thielman, Precinct 12, and also Judson Pearson, Kersey, Allison, Ampey. For the school department, uh, our former members are in town meeting, Bill Carey, Patricia Warden, Leba Hyam, and Joseph Curro. Superintendent Bodie is here, uh, Assistant Superintendent Chesson, and CFO Diane Johnson distributed the, uh, the, uh, the budget books to you uh, with uh, Julie Dunn Monday night, and I move uh, acceptance. Receive. Thank All you. in favor of receiving the report of the school committee, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? It is so received. And uh, Superintendent Bodie will give you some very brief highlights. Good evening, Kathleen Bodie, Superintendent of Schools. I guess they will be briefer than I had planned. Um, this evening, I'm here to ask your support in the uh, the appropriation for the school budget, which will come up later in town meeting. Um, but the reason we're having the report tonight, I'm asking your support for the recommendation of the Capital Committee for the funding of the Stratton renovations, which will provide parity with our other elementary schools, and also for the technology funding that they are recommending. Um, all of the graphs but one you will find in your book, but I did want to have this opportunity to make a, a couple of comments. The first graph um, is a graph that you have seen before, which just shows the relative relationship of the town appropriation to the other, the other funding sources for our budget. One of the questions that um, we always want to ask, are we investing wisely in our, in our schools, and what are the outcomes for that investment? And to address this question, it's often important to uh, compare ourselves to other districts. In the Arlington's FY16 budget and financial plan, you will see a list of town of, of comparable communities known as the Town Managers 12. These were communities um, selected by town, school, and union leadership based on a number of metrics. The first graph that you will see shows um, Arlington in terms of its per pupil expenditures as compared to 11 other communities. The second graph will show the achievement of our, of our students relative to the same group of peers. And you will see that 
in the comparison of this, we are definitely getting a ter terrific investment in our schools, and I attribute that to the high quality of our teachers and administrators, the motivation of our students, and support of parents. Um, partly because of our achievement role, uh, results, enrollment is growing. In this next uh, graph, you will see uh, the trend that we have predicted. Uh, in the last three years, we have grown by over 450 students, which is equal to another school. Um, this, uh, um, as a result of this, we have um, engaged an architectural firm, HMFH, to do a, a, a study of space to verify our enrollment projections and to give us options for space usage. I also want to let you know that we did resubmit uh, in April the statement of interest to the Massachusetts School Building Authority um, for the renovation or rebuild of the Arlington High School. Um, one of the things that um, we, you can, that I want you to also take a look at is putting in the context of enrollment growth and who's moving into Arlington. This was a report that was made about a week ago. Uh, this was a study done by uh, Richard Florida, who is the co-founder of City Space, senior editor of The Atlantic, and a professor at NYU, showing where people who are in the high-page knowledge fields are choosing to live. And you will see in this graph, this is a nationwide study and you'll see Northern California, you'll see DC and Boston, and in the Boston area, Arlington is one of the four communities. So I, I, I think this is again explains a lot why we're seeing this enrollment growth, and um, I will cut my remarks very short right now, and again, thank you for your continued support of the schools. Thank you very much, Dr. Bodie. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Alan Reedy, member of the Permanent Town Building Committee and town meeting member from Precinct 16. I move that the report of the Permanent Town Building Committee be received. Second. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? So received. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So I'm here to report on, on two significant projects that the committee has been working on this year and then an upcoming one. And you should all have the report on your seats tonight. The first, the central fire station, phase two, the interior renovation. This is following phase one, which focused on the exterior of the building. This renovation is to significantly upgrade and renovate the, the interior of the building. Um, since this building is, is a historic building, quite old, there were a number of uh, conditions that were discovered over the course of the interior renovation that, uh, that we had to deal with. However, uh, and in spite of, in spite of that, um, we are on track now to finish up this project within the next two months, um, under budget, and almost essentially uh, on time, just slightly over. We will achieve uh, LEED Silver certification for this building following the uh, bylaw I believe we have in, in town to, to set LEED Silver as a goal for all building projects. And it is possible uh, that we actually will uh, get the gold standard which we're, we're aiming to, to achieve. The second project, the Community Safety Building, Phase 2, which is the exterior renovation. For those of you who have been following this uh, saga for the last couple of years, um, I'm very pleased to tell you that we're down to the very last items um, that need to be cleaned up on this project, and we're fully confident that this will be brought to a close in the very near future, and that there is, there is no change in the requested funding for this project from what we presented to you last year, uh, just over uh, $3.2 million. Then we move on to the next phase of the project, which similar to the fire station, will be a, a very uh, large renovation and upgrade of the interior spaces of the building. Again, we shoot, as we do for all of our projects, for LEED Silver. The construction bids 
uh, were received today, and we've just taken a quick look at them, and we feel very confident that we'll be able to um, conduct this project uh, within the budget that was established for it. And under Article 24, which I believe will be uh, uh, taken out of order uh, tonight, uh, we do seek the construction funding for this project. We hope to start July and then finish the project uh, in just over a year afterwards. And I'd like to just stop right now and uh, make a few acknowledgments on behalf of the committee. Um, we are very fortunate to have um, real strong leadership both in the police department, fire department with uh, Chief Ryan and Chief Jefferson who really uh, just, just jumped right into both of these projects and, and worked work with us, worked with our contractors. They were our eyes and ears on the ground um, throughout these projects and, and uh, did a wonderful job. The last project I'd like to mention is the upcoming Stratton School renovation, which uh, Superintendent Bodie just, just noted. This will be uh, a, a renovation of the interior, but also even more significantly, so, you know, building systems, accessibility of this school so that the Stratton School, when this is done, the last of the elementary schools that we committed to uh, quite a while ago, that, um, that we will have a, a consistent level of form and function with the other elementary schools. And we will be requesting design funding for this under Article 24 as well. Just one more second uh, of your time, please. I'd like to acknowledge the members of the Permanent Town Building Committee, many of whom are in the hall tonight. Um, Adam Chapdelaine, the town manager. Uh, John Cole, unfortunately, was not able to be here tonight. He's our chairman. Uh, Bill Hayner from the school committee. Uh, Chief Jefferson. Um, John Marr, who has brought a, a wealth of experience and skill to the committee since he joined it. Uh, Mark Miano, who's the facilities manager for the town. And Suzanne Robinson, who keeps us honest with all of our, our uh, work around lead and uh, sustainability. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank your committee. Mr. Helmer. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Eric Helm with Precinct 12 and Chair of the Electronic Voting Study Committee. Uh, before I give the very brief report of the committee, I would like, with the moderator's permission, to expand on a couple of instruction points. Sure. sure. So, on your handsets, if you press a button now, it will say, received. That's not a vote. When voting is open, it has to say yes received or no received. Look for that. I know the moderator said that, but the point I wanted to make is that you can, when the voting's not open and valid, it can say received, but that's not, that's not happening. So I think that happened a couple of times Monday. So make sure that you see the yes or no and press it again if you don't. It can take a couple of seconds, but that should clear up any, um, any difficulties. Um, the second thing is just a reminder to please return your handsets at the bins um, at the close of the meeting. And oh, finally, if you have a problem with your, with your handset, if you think that something went wrong with the vote, uh, don't touch any buttons and bring it over the table. We'll look at the display and we can tell a couple of things from that. So thank you. All right, so now for the report. It's very brief. Yeah, the Electronic Voting Study Committee was created in 2012 to study and make recommendations about electronic voting regarding the adoption thereof to town meeting. We studied it. We recommended you adopt it. You adopted it. We hope you like it. And we're done. <laughs> the committee and the moderator uh, believe that any remaining tasks for continuing to study and evaluate and assist with the operation of electronic voting can be handled by the town uh, manager's office, uh, other town employees, volunteers that the moderator may choose to appoint, uh, such as myself this evening, to assist with the voting. Um, and also, um, importantly, to the Town Meeting, town meeting Procedures Committee. Uh, so therefore, upon the unanimous vote of this committee, and I'd like to quickly name them and thank them for their years of hard work, uh, Moderator John Leone, Adam Ouster, Secretary Wes Beal, Rolly Chappett, Steve Storch, and Chris Moore, um, I move that the Electronic Voting Study Committee be dissolved at the conclusion of Annual Town Meeting 2015. All in favor? Bye.
opposed? It, Finally, it, Mr. it will be resolved upon the dissolution of this meeting. Can we do our test vote this evening? We can. Thank you. Thank you all very much. So, Mr. Renault. We're going to do our annual our evening test vote to make sure our. Well, there it is. Will the Red Sox win the World Series this season? So we're going to take a vote. Do you all understand what we're voting on? Vote one for yes, two for no, and three for abstain. Uh, this is our test vote. Nope. So the clock is starting, so vote. Who? It should, if you pressure one or two now, it will. I got a yes received. I don't control that clock, the computer does. They're allowed to? Yeah. Okay, so Mr. Renault, our expert, says that it'll start collecting your votes and tabulating them before I say go. But don't bet on it. Wait till the clock starts before you vote. Okay, let's have our tally, Mr. Renault. Oh, 97 yes, 71 no. It carries. Make sure your clicker worked correctly. Look at seven. Oh my gosh. Bunch of killjoys. <laughs> Yankee fans. <laughs> Okie dokie. Everybody's vote appeared to be right. If so, we're going to move on. Mr. Tosti. Thank you. I move that Article 3 be laid upon the table. All in favor of laying 3 upon the table, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Article 3 is the table. That brings us back to Article 11. Um, over the last two days, there's been some talk of a grand compromise among Mr. Deist, Mr. Um, Hanner, and Mr. Warden to consolidate their three s close but divergent articles on your seats. You will find one which will get introduced. Now, procedurally, though, those three article, those three substitute motion, amended motions were put before the meeting, so we have to dispose of them, and then we'll take up the original motion, the new proposed motion. So. Mr. Deist. John Deist, Precinct 13. I move leave to withdraw my motion. All in favor of withdrawing Mr. Deist's motion, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Mr. Deist's motion is so withdrawn. Mr. Warden? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Worden, Precinct 8. I ask leave of the meeting to withdraw my uh, <coughs> um, amendment, proposed amendment to Article 11. All in favor of withdrawing Mr. Warden's proposed amendment to Article 11, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Mr. Mr. Warden's amendment is so withdrawn. Mr. Hainer. Mr. Moderator, I move to withdraw my motion uh, on Article 11. We have a motion to withdraw Mr. Hanna's motion on Article 11. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Mr. Hanna's motion is withdrawn. Mr. Moderator, I move the following amendment. We, William Hanna, John L. Warden, and John Dice do hereby make the following amendment. 
in the last sentence of Section 1A, the following words to Article 11 be deleted, appointed by a joint vote of approval by the Board of Selectmen and the Town Manager as follows below in Section 1B, and replaced with the following. Before I read it, there is a slight change, and I will explain why the change had happened prior to the one that you got on, the, on your chair. Uh, be replaced with the following. Appointed by an appointing committee of five members composed of the town manager, the moderator, the chair of the board of selectmen, the chair of the finance committee, and the chair of the capital planning committee uh, and or their designee. Uh, the section one be deleted in its entirety. The section one C be re re reorganized as section one B. That section one D be reorganized as section one C. The reason for the change is that the Long Range Planning Committee is an ad hoc committee and may have caused some uh, legal problems with it. We tried to smooth it out. We're looking for representation across the town. Thank you. Do I have a second on that motion? Mr. Haney, do you have the two originals for me? Okay, um, Mr. Rearing. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Brian Rearing, Precinct 8. And Mr. Good, if we could get uh, slide B up there, please. <clears throat> Forgive me, everyone. Um, I, I rise in support of the Selectman's main motion, but in order to get there, um, I'm introducing an amendment to that just off, with the, select, with the uh, moderator's consent, to um, that just made by Mr. Hainer, Mr. Deist, and Mr. Warden, to simplify and reduce their proposal in scope, um, replacing their proposed language that appointed a committee of five with the following language, appointed by a committee of three, consisting of the town manager, the moderator, and the chair of the board of selectmen or their designees. If I could get a second on that. Sure. Thank you. Um, I'm making this amendment to their motion. In the event that the meeting feels that it needs to um, move toward this model that includes the moderator in Disappointment Authority. I urge you, and I will urge you at the end, to support my amendment and then vote down the amended motion by Mr. Hainer, Deist, and, uh, uh, and Warden. So, in support of the Selectman's main, main motion, we got tangled up on Monday night. We took very little time to consider what CPA actually means, why we're creating this committee, and what its mission actually is. By supporting CPA, the voters adopted the legislation that calls for creation of both a committee and a funding stream. The committee's charge is to, quote, study the needs, possibilities, and resources of the city or town regarding community preservation. That's a ground up process through a series of required steps, doing outreach and public hearings and getting input from residents on the elements of the town's physical heritage that are valued by the community and how they can be enhanced and preserved for future generations. It creates an initial plan, and each year presents recommendations for specific projects to town meeting. So the committee's charge is to bring forward community needs and desires in the focus areas of CPA, historic preservation, open space and recreation, and affordable housing. Some of those projects will be already planned and vetted by the capital planning process, as you will have already heard in last year's discussion, and we'll hear again under the capital plan, where CPA can provide relief to the capital plan with leveraged funding. Some will be projects percolating up from the community, expressing the unmet needs and opportunities in preserving our historic assets and increasing the affordability of our housing stock. Attracting, evaluating, and nurturing those projects calls for a committee of energetic, engaged, creative, and passionate citizens. For that reason, the selectmen have proposed expanding the required five-person committee to the maximum of nine, with four at-large members appointed by the selectmen and manager together We've heard proposals to shift those appointments elsewhere. I believe they belong with the manager and selectmen for three reasons. First, because the manager is best equipped 
to do the outreach needed to attract a wide spectrum of applicants. Second, because it is the most transparent appointment process available to us. The entire board and the manager will debate and vote on the appointments in public televised session. And third, because an open and unified appointment process can best create a balanced, coherent committee that broadly represents the community and offers needed skills and experience. Now, why not some of the other nominating entities were suggested? Consider the moderator. With all due respect, he speaks for town meeting, but the Community Preservation Committee is not a committee of town meeting, like, for example, FinCom and Capital Planning. It's a separate entity, like many other boards and commissions of the town, which are traditionally, and in almost all cases, appointed by the executive, that is, the manager and the board of selectmen. The Finance Committee is yet another step removed from the voters. It is itself an appointed body. Appointment by FinCom or its chair would have holders of appointed positions appointing other appointed positions. Some have suggested that the committee needs financial skills. It will have plenty. The selectmen's proposal, proposed by law, asks both the Finance Committee and the Capital Planning Committee to appoint designated liaisons to community preservation. Those FinCom and Capital Planning members will be in the room, available to advise and coordinate with the entire process of formulating community preservation recommendations to town meeting. In the end, please remember that all projects recommended for community preservation funding will be worked through with capital planning and submitted to FinCom for its evaluation before being presented to town meeting. The Community Preservation Committee can't spend a dime without this meeting approving it. So let's set the Community Preservation Committee up for success by encouraging the broadest possible participation with the most open, transparent, and inclusive appointment process we have available to us. Please let the manager and selectmen do their jobs. Please reject the proposed amendment of Mr. Hainer, Warden, and Deist, and whether or not you modify it with my proposal. And please support the selectmen's main motion. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Schlickman, you were next on the list. Pat, Mr. Schlickman passes. Mr. Jamison. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. So we now have uh, committees of six, five, and three as potential options for the control part here. So uh, uh, my apologies, I don't have any graphic for the three, but I did try to work through something that I thought me might be helpful. Um, if we could have the original one. Okay, so, so what we have here is the, um, the way this works. So the Community Preservation Committee is in the middle. The, their appointing authorities are the five groups that each have their designee that is on the committee. That's in the language of the vote, no matter what we do tonight. The vote of the put forth in the re report of the Board of Selectmen, which is the thing that is on the floor now, to be modified or not, uses the Board of Selectmen plus the manager a committee of six to determine the other four members. Okay. To be a, a member, to, to be designated a member, it, they have to get two thirds, four out of two, four and four out of six votes, because three and three would not appoint someone. That, that, that would give you the way it is now, that would be the committee. Um, the committee is gonna get input from each of the five appointing authorities, plus the FinCom, plus the Capital Planning Committee, plus the Board of Selectmen, that's in parts 2A and 2D, and proposed votes will come to us for final approval. And the proposals for what is gonna go in will come from a variety of sources to be reviewed by the committee. So that's what's on the floor initially when we started this last night, uh, Monday. Okay, so I was fortunate to get most of the, uh, tr the trifecta's uh, um, uh, amendment in the next one. Well, actually, let's stay here. Mr. Rarig's amendment um, would have the, f the f uh, would have the um, a board of, uh, if I read his amendment correctly as posted up here, would have a committee of three, consisting of the chair of the board of selectmen, the town manager, and the moderator. Um, I think that's too small. I'm, I would uh, vote, uh, urge a vote against Mr. Rarig's uh, kind amendment. Next figure. Revised. Okay, so this, with one minor exception, is what the uh, three gentlemen have put forth. 
Like everything to the right, from the middle to the right, is the same as nothing, none of that's going to change. On the left, we have the five authorities are again doing their work. And then actually the long range planning committee, as Mr. Uh, as they discussed, has been removed. That is now the chair of the capital planning committee. So the, board, the, the, the committee of five, and here you don't need to vote of three to be appointed, would consist of the chairs of the board of selectmen, the finance committee, the capital planning committee, the town manager, and the moderator, if I've got that right, okay? Now, I see advantages to both, Mr. Riergs aside, I see advantages to both. Um, the Board of Selectmen is quite skilled in the, together with the, the manager, is quite skilled in the art of appointment. They do this all the time. Um, I think together they would, and having five members of the Board of Selectmen, I think gives a much broader thing. So I tend to be in favor of the original vote from the Board of Selectmen, which as Ms. Stamps noted, is the way most towns run their appointment process. So let's go back, but this one here, um, if you like the fact that uh, the moderator's in, I want to remind you that in general, we get down in this nitty gritty as a, as a body when it is a committee of town meeting. This is not a committee of town meeting. So that's why I tend to uh, favor the vote as put forth by the selectmen, I guess. But it's up to you to make your decision. Hopefully that's proven helpful. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, sir. Stephen Harrington. Uh, Ms. Daniel Court. Yep. Um, I'd also like to, oh, I'm sorry, Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. I'd also like to rise in support of the Selectman's main motion I think that the CPA committee, as in most communities, is appropriately appointed by the Board of Selectmen, and it's especially important to me because I would really like to see this committee consist of people who are not necessarily the usual suspects that these appointments be made in a public process on television where everybody can see who has been appointed and there can be some discussion about the members in a public place that's available to all of us to watch about the qualifications of the members of this committee. The main qualification for the members of this committee would not be to be fiscal watchdogs. The main qualifications of the, member of this the members of this committee would be to ensure that the projects reflect the desires of the community for how this money would be spent and that the projects are appropriate to the purposes for which this money can be used. Keep in mind that this committee will not be able to propose projects that exceed the amount of money that the surtax raises. This committee is not going to have the power to fiscally exceed the amount of money set aside by the tax, increase the amount of money set aside by the tax, or anything else. And if they're going to contribute money to projects that are going to be funded under the capital budget, for example, they're going to have to coordinate with the capital planning committee and the final arbiter of what money is spent on what is us. All of this will come to us for a vote. So I think that it's appropriate that this is a selectmen's committee and that the main focus on what the members should be concerned with is the nature of the projects and how they reflect community values. That's a question of expertise in the areas of planning and community development and community consensus and housing and all the purposes for which this money would be spent. So I would appreciate it if you would support the Selectman's main motion and not the uh, proposed change in the appointing committee. If you absolutely feel you need to change the appointing committee, then I would support Brian's motion because I think that is the appropriate group to make this choice. Thank you. Mr. Michaelman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Tom Michaelman, Precinct 7. As I am a new member, of town meeting member, I want to provide a little background about myself that is relevant to the recommendation of this article. I worked in Arlington for about 10 years through the end of 2013 and was a resident in the mid-80s, and I've only recently moved back to Arlington. I was a resident of Acton for about 20 years, 
and was and am still president of the Friends of the Bruce Rubin Rail Trail, the proposed and partially built 25 mile Lowell to Framingham analog to the Minuteman Bikeway. As a citizen of a town with a CPA for many years via my rail trail capacity, I have had the opportunity to be involved in CPA proposals in Acton, Carlisle, Concord, Sudbury, and Westford. In all cases, coordination with town staff and the town manager was hugely important. In all cases, the proposals were closely vetted because they dealt with spending from the fixed CPA budget and spending money on one proposal meant not spending money on other, another proposal or hoarding funds for future planned expenditures. In all cases, proposals were vetted by the CPC to the appropriate boards. In considering what is, would be best for Arlington, let's consider what the CPA is supposed to do. It is really a segregated bucket of funds partially funded from the state coffers set aside for specific purposes that is not beholden to year-to-year -year vagaries and pressure of town budgeting. A town cannot claw back the CPA funds into the general budget if the general budget has a shortfall. The original Warren article proposed by the selectmen has the Board of Selectmen in coordination with the town manager choosing all four at-large CPC members. It provides, and still provides, plenty of opportunity for vetting, feedback, and liaisons with all relevant committees on the proposed projects. And of course, the ultimate decision whether to approve a project lies with an up and down, up or down vote of town meeting. The current proposed amendment, or the one, not Mr. Rarick's, um, the original one by the trifecta, um, the current proposed amendment has the appointing committee of five, relegates the Board of Selectmen to just one of five votes. The amendment proposes an appointing committee, including, you've already heard it, Chair of Board of Selectmen, Town Manager, Town Moderator, Chair of Finance Committee, and the Chair of the Capital Planning Committee. On consideration, I don't want appointed members of other committees setting the agenda for the new committee by having the power to pick its members. Of course, the CPA should, fund should be invested in projects in coordination and vetted by other committees, and as the unamended Warren article, it would. But it should not be constrained by the Finance Committee, nor the Long Range, oh well, now the Capital Planning Committee, um, visions for the town. I don't like the idea of an unelected committee members controlling another committee. Each committee should be a separate entity. I also prefer that the town member moderator not be included in appointing the, in the appointing committee, as the town manager and board of selectmen are dealing with issues relevant to the CPA projects on a daily basis in running the town, which is separate from running town meeting, though I am much more comfortable with the elected town moderator being part of the appointing committee than members of other committees. In summary, I ask you to reject the amendment to Article 11 and vote for the original Warren article unamended. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, sir. The woman down here in the middle. Yes. No, nope, right there. She's standing up. She's up. I was the one vote for John Warden's previous amendment, and I'm disappointed that he withdrew it because it sort of seemed to have covered the bases. In addition to the, to the five CPA members, we're just talking about four members here, four members. And I feel really uncomfortable the last minute three people are banding together and getting rid of their carefully thought through amendments, and all of a sudden we have to make this decision on it without really thinking this through. So I hope that we can keep up the debate. I like the term limits, so I would be inclined to maybe consider Sean Harrington's term limit amendment, but I really feel uncomfortable, and there's one other point about this trifecta, as somebody just said. The, ch the chair of the Board of Selectmen the chair of the finance committee or their designees. Well, I'm not really sure what that means, and I really don't feel comfortable with that. That's sort of vague. Well, are they gonna all get together and say we want this one person? So you really, are they gonna vote on who the designee is? i really like to know who we're working with. And I like the idea of the Board of Selectmen's original 
amendment that we can actually go to the meetings. And if you guys think there's something going on, go to the Board of Selectmen meetings. Give your input. If there's somebody you think that should be on that committee, then by all means speak up, because we can do that. But if we're just going to have all these other people, these three people that I respect, but they all have their time and they all have their say, let's give it back to the Board of Selectmen and we can go to the meetings and we can lobby who we think would be appropriate for that as well. So that's all I wanted to say. I just felt really uncomfortable with this and their designee. I'm not really sure what that means. And now at the last minute, they're taking out the Long Range Planning Committee and putting in the Capital Planning Committee, which I think is already going to be involved in that process anyway. So just makes me really uncomfortable, this last minute sort of ganging up and I'd really feel more comfortable going with the original amendment, maybe with Sean Harrington's term limits. Thanks. Mr. Peluso. Ed Peluso from Precinct 6? Yeah, 6. <laughs> uh, I'm going to mention two numbers. The budget, for two, the budget for 2016 is $141 million. Uh, the school represents something like 53 million. So it sounds like about $100 million is being managed by our town manager. Wow. Now, the, uh, uh, the uh, I'm losing my train of thought a little bit. The capital, the, the CPA, right? It's going to be about a million five. One percent. Okay? I have to tell you truthfully, I'm astonished with the conversations here tonight and on Monday night. And I'll tell you why I'm astonished. The CPA was passed by the voters. Now, when I think about it, I say, well, if the CPA was passed by the voters, why shouldn't the voters have some input into who gets on the committee. And you know how they express their input? They elected those five guys. I know they also elected this fellow. They elected somebody who was the town clerk, and they elected a treasurer. So, you know, if you're going to get into what I consider nitpicking, okay, my suggestion is take all the people who were elected by the voters. We did not elect those people. The voters elect them. And I have to tell you, if we don't trust them and they screw up, we'll kick them out. It's that simple, right? So I want to suggest the following. Let's trust the people we elected. Let's let them pick the people on the committee. That's what democracy and a republic is supposed to be all about. Now, as long as I'm at it, and if I'm out of order, I'll probably get this in before I'm out of order. <laughs> You're not going to laugh at this one. I, I was very proud to serve on the Town Government Reorganization Committee and frustrated. But the proudest thing that I felt was the oath of office for the town meeting members. And that oath of office, there's a very key word in there, respect for town, fellow town meeting members. Now, unfortunately, a year ago, I heard words that were not respectful. And on Monday night, I heard words that were not respectful. Now, oh. I like to give a round of applause to John Leone for pointing that out at the beginning of the meeting tonight. But please, do me a favor, huh? I'm an old man. Don't waste my time with personal issues. Take them outside the building. 
okay? Don't bring him in here. And when you present anything, please show some respect to the people in this room. I heard words that if I had a, any sense at all, I would think were not only disrespectful, but were also a little full of innuendo. And that troubles me a lot, okay? So it's time to stop that, okay? Thank you, Mr. Peluso. Mr. Coro, you are next on the list. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator, uh, fellow town meeting members. Joseph Curo, Precinct 15. I I'm also a member of the uh, Board of Selectmen. I'm not standing up to specifically criticize um, any of the other proposals that have been put forward, but rather to uh, state why I think that the Board's recommendation makes sense. You know, one, one of the things that was said the other night, it was suggested that the uh, Board of Selectmen is uh, a bunch of glorified ribbon cutters and that our, uh, you know, we're not su sufficiently involved in the uh, fiscal management of the town to be qualified to uh, handle these, um, <clears throat> this appointment task. I wanted to just give you a, a, a quick rundown of some of the ways in which we, we are very much involved in the uh, fiscal management of the town. The collaborative fiscal planning uh, first and foremost, you know, we facilitate the uh, meetings of the Long Range Planning Committee. Mr. Tosti referenced that, that plan on the very first night. Um, many different stakeholders in town do. And the board uh, facilitates that. We're also involved the Budget and Revenue Task Force, Audit Advisory Committee, Comparative Compensation Study Committee, Coordinated Finance Stakeholder Group, the CDBG, which we will, you will be asked to endorse and involves a lot of uh, very difficult decisions with uh, limited resources. We approve bond issues authorized by this town meeting set sewer wa uh, water and sewer rates, other fees and fines. We will be approving cable contract soon, which has a fiscal component, contracts for the town manager. We set policy for the Sims Re Redevelopment Fund, balance, balance policy. We approve leases for property under our jurisdiction, recommend disp uh, disposition of real property. Approved statement of interest for school building projects. We're involved in Minuteman. Um, <clears throat> hiring and oversight of the comptroller, town manager, uh, approve the assistant town uh, treasurer, collector of taxes, fill vacancies on various boards, including board of assessors. Recently, we approve the classification of tax rates, and when needed, we uh, authorize override uh, questions. That's to say that we are very much involved in, in the fiscal processes, and we understand the need for the, the collaborative nature and the collaborative tradition um, of, the, of this town. And I think that through our discussion uh, as a board on this article, that we recognize that that's exactly what we will need on, on the, um, the CPC, the Community Preservation Committee, is an adherence to that, to that tradition. Now, we're not always unanimous in the things that we do. We, we've often disagreed um, very seriously on appointments to committees. We disagreed on the CPA itself. As a matter of fact, we, our hearing went two or three nights on this article because we wanted to get it right when we put it before a town meeting, and we went through a number of iterations before we came to what we, we have uh, before you um, this evening. We also felt that it was um, <clears throat> very important that the town manager play a role in this. As has been stated before, um, you know, the town manager makes an awful lot of appointments to uh, committees and boards in this town. Um, usually they come for, for uh, confirmation by the, the Board of Selectmen, not always, and sometimes we make some, uh, there are certain cases where we make appointments ourselves. And I just wanted to take a quick poll um, of the folks here. How many of you have ever been appointed to a, a position in town, either by the Board of Selectmen or the town manager, for anything? Look around, that gives you a sense of kind of the caliber of folks that we would be looking for, uh, at least I would be looking for, um, as members for the CPC, as well as other residents out, out in, the, in the broader community. It's been stated that this was a ballot question. We're very, as elected officials, five elected officials, we're very cognizant of the voters who voted for this, as, as well as those who, who did not support it, that it's going to be very important that, that this uh, operate um, efficiently. And that gets me to um, kind of another point. We've been discussing so much you know, who makes the appointments to the committee or whatnot, but we haven't discussed as much how will this operate? How do we as a town, what do we as a town member want to get out of this? I think during the debate last year, during the debate around the uh, ballot question, we talked a lot about 
kind of a dynamic tension with the CPA. On the one hand, it's a fiscal tool. And so it's going to be very important that we, we have close coordination with the other fiscal bodies in town. On the other hand, there are a set of public policy goals that are embodied within the CPA. And it's going to be important as well that those be given proper attention. That having been said, the board and our recommendation to this, this body, we went um, you know, above and beyond what is typically done in other communities. We specifically spelled out, uh, first of all, I should say, we didn't set aside any carve-outs for any specific um, boards or committees, including ourselves. We want the four at-large members to be drawn from the broader community, the broadest possible pool. But we did specifically call out that there would be a liaison function for a member of our board, for a member of the Finance Committee, for a member of the Capital Planning Committee. That's very important. And we went beyond that. In the recommendation you have before you, there's a specific requirement that before the Community Preservation Committee comes to town meeting, which has the final say on any of the recommendations, they must present to the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, and to the Capital Planning Committee for feedback they must do that, and we felt very strongly about, um, about that aspect of it. Given that nobody has, has sought to amend that part of, of uh, the board's recommendation, I'm going to gather that there's broad agreement on, on, on that necessity, no matter how we come down on, on um, the appointing authority itself. Um, the last thing I wanted to note is we, we felt strongly about keeping the, the town manager in there as well, um, and, and acting as a partner with us, one of the uh, six six to vote um, on appointments. I mean, you know, the budget that we vote on here, as Mr. Peluso noted, a large part of that budget, that originates as the town manager's bu budget. It's vetted by the Finance Committee. That is the town manager's budget when it's initially developed, and it's also ad it's administered by the town manager. It's important, and he'll, he'll be responsible for administering whatever projects we approve through the, through the CPC, so it is important that he be part of that process um, as well. So with that, um, I would just respectfully request that you please um, you know, reject the amendments that have been put forward and uh, support the uh, selectman's motion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rudiman? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Ruderman, Precinct 9. I'll uh, try to take up a couple of questions that have come up uh, in this evening's, in this evening's uh, discussion. Uh, three, uh, at our previous meeting, there were um, what, what I heard described as a flurry of amendments uh, proposed to, to um, uh, the, propose, the uh, Article 11. Uh, one was uh, withdrawn in the meeting, and uh, the uh, proponents of three others have uh, put together, along with commentary from, well, I think, another 10 or 12 people, uh, a version that seeks to accomplish what had been seen as, as, as a common purpose. And there's nothing, you know, last minute or, uh, you know, behind the scenes about it. It's simply a matter of uh, different parties getting together to uh, reconcile similar but not exact uh, copies of, of amendments that, that uh, proceed along the same path. Question comes up uh, that, uh, you know, of course, of course, uh, the, uh, it is expected that the uh, Community Preservation Committee will work in close coordination and seek out, seek out projects and, and have membership drawn from uh, a, the, the most representative uh, description that you can hold of, 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 of the great volunteerism that keeps Arlington functioning as a town. Uh, the people that I correspond with in other town governments are, are, are frankly amazed sometimes that, that uh, a, a town of over 40,000 people can still function as a town with a town meeting, uh, having long since gone to, you know, city governments where, where there's a, you know, perhaps a, an elected man, a, a hired city manager and a, and a board of aldermen or a city council, and that's it. You know, the same, the same, you know, five or seven or nine people who make all the decisions. Uh, that's not the way Arlington has worked, and I don't think, I, I don't think we should change that. Um, we have, we have uh, proposals in front of us, excuse me, just a second, 
that all seek to accomplish the same ends. And to quote from, uh, to quote from uh, further down in Article 11 that the previous speaker just, just alluded to, that there doesn't seem to be any problem with at all that uh, this committee shall consult with existing municipal boards, including, and then there's a long list of them, and they include uh, Finance Committee, Capital Planning Committee. Yes, that's part of the intention. And I seek to underscore that part of the intention by making sure that the nominating committee that reaches out and finds the talented people who are willing to give their time is a little bit more broadly composed than what the selectmen proposed. Now I see, I, I see no, um, you know, you know, malintent here. I'm simply saying that, of course, the selectmen are going to support their motion. It's theirs. They worked very hard at it, and uh, <laughs> you you heard perhaps the uh, trifecta of uh, for the new members. You've heard perhaps the trifecta of uh, you know town meeting arguments Monday night. Uh, trust the people we elect. We worked very hard at it, and, uh, you know, it's a solution looking for a problem. Well, if, <laughs> I, I, I humbly submit to you that we're not a solution looking for a problem, that we are trying to get the most representative nominations that, that Arlington can offer to its community preservation uh, committee. And that's why I speak in favor of uh, the reconciled amendment that uh, three gentlemen have uh, put forward tonight. Thank you, sir. Mr. Doherty. <clears throat> Leo Doherty, Precinct 19, can we move this question, please? And on all matters before. And all items under this article. Good. We have a motion to terminate debate on all matters under this article. It has been second. It's a two thirds vote. Let's use our clickers. So this is a vote to terminate debate. One will, yes, you do want to terminate debate. Two, no, you do not want to terminate debate. I'm waiting for Mr. We're always getting us queued up. We caught him by surprise. Pressure's on, Mike. <laughs> There he goes. Ready. All right. Clock is up. Go ahead and vote. One, yes, I want to terminate debate. Two, no, I want to keep talking about it. Okay, time's up, and oh, well, let's get a tally first. We don't need that, remember? Let's just go right to the tally. All right, 197 yes, 27 no. It does pass. Debate is terminated. Yes, sir. 179. What did I say? I have dyslexia, sorry. No, really, I, I mix numbers up. 179, yes. So debate's terminated. Um, it's a couple minutes to 9.30. Do you want to take the break and then vote on all this stuff? Or that's why I'm asking. Well, what do you want to vote now? Okay, we're going to vote now. So, we have three amendments to the main motion. We're going to vote Mr. Du um, Sean Harrington's last. So put that one aside for now. We have the Hainer Warden diced motion, and we have Mr. Rearig's motion. First, we're going to vote on Mr. Rearig's motion to say if you want a three person committee, you would vote for that. If you don't want Brian's and you want the five person committee, you'll vote for Bill, John, and John's. 
If you don't want that, then you'll vote for the selectments. So first we're gonna vote on Mr. Rearigs, which will appoint a committee consisting of the town manager, the moderator, or the board of selectmen. It will amend the main motion. All right, is that? Sir. Yeah. It substitutes. No, if they vote yes on this, that substitutes the language in Hainer, Warden Warden. Yes, if they vote yes on this, it's going to substitute in place of the five people. And then we're going to vote on that as amended. Then we're going to vote on the norm, big one. It's confusing any way we're going to do it. Yes, sir. His, his is amendment to your motion. That's the way I'm reading it. The motion, an amendment, move the motion of the Hainer, Dice, and Warden. So we're going to vote his first. So if you vote for Brian Rearig's motion, it changes the wording in the Hainer motion. Then. We're going to vote on the Hainer motion as amended by Brian Rearig's motion. They just have to wait till we get there. And they have to vote no on the Warden Hainer motion. I'll explain it as we go. So the first vote, and you all queued up, so don't do anything yet. If you want the three-person committee of town manager, moderator, chair to boardman of selectmen, you'll vote yes. If you don't want that committee, you're going to vote no. All right? You're confused still. It's clear. All right, who's confused? And, huh? You can take a crack at it. I thought I made it pretty clear. Doug Heim, town council. Brian's motion, Mr. Rarig's motion, is to amend the amendment, okay? So if you're in favor of Mr. Ward, Mr. Hainer, and Mr. Dice's motion, you don't want to vote for Brian's motion, okay? But if you think, maybe I want to support the main motion, or maybe I want to support a modified version of what Mr. Hainer, Mr. Ward, and Mr. Dice have suggested, then you want to vote for Brian's motion. We will then decide, after that's been resolved, whether or not the actual amendment to the original motion is gonna happen or not. But right now you're just voting on, should we amend the amendment to scale back what Mr. Uh, Hainer, Mr. Warden, yeah. and Mr. Dice have uh, suggested? Does that make sense? Okay. What he said. <laughs> All right, you ready? Ready, Mike? Okay, go ahead and vote. Okay, so it's a hundred, excuse me, seventy five in the affirmative. 132 in the negative. Mr. Rearig's motion amendment is defeated. That now brings us to Mr. Hainer, Mr. Warden, and Mr. Dice's motion. If you like the committee that Mr. the three of them have proposed, you'll vote yes. If you don't want to have that committee, you'll vote no. And the option for no is? Two. The option for one is yes. The option for two is no. You, get a, you defeat the motion, and you're back to the selectman's motion. You're confusing it. Stop. Stop. If you want this committee, you will vote yes. If you don't want this committee, you will vote no. That leaves us with the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen as our only option. So if you want this committee, Hainer, Deist, Warden, you'll vote yes. No, you don't want it. One is yes, two is no. You ready, Mr. Renault? Ready, go, vote.
We have 76 in the affirmative, 131 in the negative. That motion is also defeated. Now, before we get to the main motion, we have Mr. Sean Harrington's motion to set a six-year term limit for the at-large members. If you want to set the six-year term limit, then you will vote yes. If you do not want term limits, you will vote no. That clear? Okay, finally I got it right. One is yes, two is no, as soon as Mr. Renault is ready. We're testing his technical skills. He's all set to go as soon as he gives me a clock. Okay, it's time to vote. Hundred and four in the affirmative, ninety eight in the negative. That passes. So, wait, one more vote to go. We now have the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen to establish the Community Preservation Committee as amended by the term limits of Mr. Harrington. If you want to go with that recommendation, you'll vote one for yes and two for no. Sir. If it loses with, with let's, let's address that. The committee of five is gone. No. No. If it's a no vote, the whole thing loses. And we have no committee at all. No, it's additional five. It's, no, it's, it's an all or nothing. You're confusing the issue. A yes? We're voting yes if you want to establish the Community Preservation Act Committee as amended by Mr. Harrington. You're voting no if you don't like the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen. Ready, Mr. Renault? Ready. Go ahead and vote. One is yes, two is no. We have 159 in the affirmative, 48 in the negative. The motion passes. It's 9.35. 9.35, we're going to take the seven-minute break to buy cookies from the Arlington High girls tennis team. Charlie's going to get up and move, um, table everything. Charlie's going to get up and table everything. As amended by Sean's amendment, yeah.
don't think we're gonna. Paul. Yeah, we'll be back here again. Who's Please come in and take your seats. But he wants That's he likes, all right. he he likes the idea of being in charge, which is good. I don't know what the hell I did with my buttons. No, no, no. Please sit down. Mr. Um, Foskett has the floor. I recognize Mr. Foskett. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Shh. Mr. Foskett has the floor, please. Mr. Foskett, Precinct 8, and uh, Chairman of the Capital Planning Committee. And I would like to uh, ask if the meeting could um, accept my motion to table articles uh, 12 through 23 and Article 25 to enable us to take up the capital budget, uh, Article 24, and the water and sewer uh, bonds, Articles 26 and 27, because uh, unfortunately I'm going to be out of town next week, and I think there's a good chance town meeting might end next week. So I make that motion. Excuse me, John. I couldn't hear you. Oh, include include seven. And also seven. seven. So we have a motion to table Article 7, 12 through 23, and Article 25. I have a second. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. Okay, that is a two-thirds vote. They are tabled. Thank you, Mr. Foskett. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, town meeting members.
So I'm going to try to use this little gadget here. I hope I'm successful. Uh, first of all, I, I, uh, looking at that picture of the Central Fire Station, I want to especially thank um, uh, Chief Jefferson and the uh, uh, Permanent Town Building Committee for managing this product, uh, project so that it's um, uh, on time and within budget. It's really, really wonderful. Uh, this, uh, that worked okay. The, the, um, the slide that you see behind me shows the names of the members of the Capital Planning Committee. And I'd like to ask those that are here, which I think um, Andrew, Fl Andrew Flanagan, uh, Michael Morse, uh, Ruth Lewis, Diane Johnson, and Brian Rarig, and Barbara Thornton to stand. I uh, just want to thank, uh, ask the meeting to recognize these people. They work uh, very hard from essentially the beginning of December. Um, two, two to four meetings a month right through the February, March time frame. And I especially want to thank Ruth Lewis, who, as you, you heard tonight, is retiring. She's been on the uh, Capital Planning Committee uh, for more than 20 years and has been providing us with uh, outstanding contributions and leadership. Ruth, thank you very much, and best of luck uh, and happiness in your retirement. So uh, I'm only going to take this, my required seven minutes tonight. And we'll note that the uh, total expenditures in the capital budget, and by the way, this is all explained in the yellow document, the capital report, which you received uh, last, uh, on Monday. The total expenditures are about 18.2 million. 13.6 is bonded, 1.4 is direct cash appropriations, and about 3.2 million is from grants, enterprise funds, and other sources, which we affectionately call other. Um, the total impact on a tax appropriation this year is $10,231,101, uh, which includes uh, debt service from prior bonding. There are 104 items in the budget, several hundred more in the five-year plan. Uh, after this presentation, you can ask questions about any one of them, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to go through all of them. And I just want to tell you that the official vote of the um, Finance Committee is in the Finance Committee report, but there's a copy in your document. I'd like to focus on three topics tonight. One is the Community Safety Building, the second is the Stratton School, and the third is the Community Preservation Act and Capital Planning, and one possible way in which we can successfully uh, work together in the future. As you know, the Community Safety a renovation project has been going on for some time. There have been two phases that have been completed, the garage deck infrastructure and uh, recently securing the outer building, building envelope. We originally planned five phases, but as mentioned to you last year, we're trying to collapse the last three into one to reduce the stress on the police department and to constrain costs. In this uh, Article 24, we're, we're recommending an expenditure of $7,647,000, and we ask your support of this critical project for upgrading the interior codes and program functionality for the building that's our daily home for the policemen and women who are Arlington's first responders. I'd like to say a couple of words about the Stratton School. This is the final elementary school renovation project that was initially uh, undertaken starting around 1991. And uh, it included the, uh, the Addison Middle School, in the uh, seven elementary schools. The other, all the other schools have been partially funded by MSBA. The MSBA declined to, uh, to fund the Stratton, and we have an opportunity to complete this project during this year and next year, and uh, we are recommending that we move forward with that. The, uh, there was a working committee, a, a Stratton School Building Committee that worked with the school department and, con and the school department contracted with DRA for a comprehensive feasibility study. They issued a report and it's the result of that report that we have incorporated into the capital budget. The uh, Stratton School proposal uh, as presented in the report came up with uh, three different scenarios and the first three are just summarized uh, on the slide behind me. We, uh, we, meaning the Capital Planning Committee and the school department settled and agreed on, the f on scenario number four, uh, uh, which is a single phase project, hopefully done in within a, a duration of 14 months to have minimum disruption on the uh, academic life of the students and also uh, to, to help uh, control costs because we strongly believe that 
that if we as tried to extend this product project, we would be uh, faced with uh, additional, additional costs. Um, the Stratton financing plan is basically to use both um, debt excluded funds, uh, capital, uh, non-exempt capital funds, and the sale of town assets. And the total project cost is about 12 million and it's included over fiscal year 16 and 17 in this plan. The uh, slide behind me is basically a summary of the different um, categories of exempt and non-exempt debt. And I'm trying using this to point out that uh, the, even using the uh, funds from the debt exclusion in 2000, because of the declining exempt funds, this, uh, the Stratton School <coughs> is not going to increase uh, taxes to the taxpayer. Um, <coughs> I think we all know what the Community Preservation Act is. And there's some overlap uh, between uh, the Capital Planning Committee and the Community Preservation Act Committee uh, in, in the sense, in the terms of what might be uh, funded by capital planning or by the CPA. And um, I just wanted to show you on the left hand side of this uh, slide, we have the three sources of funding that you are traditionally have seen in the capital plan cash, bond, and other. And what I think uh, we hope you will be seeing in the future is that there'll be four sources of funding, cash, bond, other, and CPA. And we're looking at the, a, a way to view the CPA funding and planning very similar to the way we look at the other category today. The other category includes uh, the CDBG funds, for example, or uh, water and sewer enterprise funds, or other uh, independent bodies, independent sources of funding and on which, under which the expenditures are decided by independent uh, committees. And occasionally, um, some of the f that funding moves into the, into the capital budget. So uh, our proposal is to f sort of follow this um, approach. And if I could just show you this last slide. Um, That's it, Joe, you gotta wrap it up. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up 30 seconds. Uh, basically, the, uh, the, f the request would come to the CPC Capital Planning Committee, uh, if they were in the CPA uh, cat in the CPA category, they would be reviewed by the independently by the, S the Community Preservation Act Committee, and they would make their determination as to whether the projects would go forward. Those that did not go forward under the CPA would return to the CPC for further evaluation and review and possible incorporation in the non-exempt capital plan in the future. So I'm asking uh, that you support. Um, Articles 24, 26, and 27, uh, which are explained in more detail in the uh, capital plan. Thank you. Capital planning report. Thank, thank you very much. <coughs> Sir. Mark Lombard, Precinct 13. I uh, just wanted to say I'm in 100% supportive of the Stratton renovation project. However, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce a fellow Arlington resident, uh, Lee Panettieri, who would like to voice uh, some concerns on behalf of the Stratton community regarding the Stratton renovation project. Thank you. Lee. Thank you, Mark. Uh, good evening. I'm the mom of a second grader, a present second grader at the Stratton Elementary School who will be in fourth grade during the year of the renovation. Uh, six Pawnee Drive in Arlington. Your name? Um, I wanted to, um, of course I, I wanted- Name. Lee Panettieri. Sorry, I guess they didn't hear you, Mark. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, I, I, I wanna join the previous speakers in, um, in supporting the renovation of the Stratton Elementary School. As parents, we are grateful for the town's financial support and we urge you to fund the renovation as requested. I'm here to talk to you about a component of the renovation that will actually come before you next year. You're probably wondering why is she here talking to me so late at night about something that we're not actually voting on tonight. Exactly. It's because it's extremely important, it is a cost item, and we want you to be thinking about it as at, right at the beginning of the, uh, the funding process. It's about where the Stratton students are going to be while the renovation is going on. Uh, we're urging a change to the proposed Stratton building plan so that the fourth graders will be placed in an elementary school and not at the Audison Middle School. Miss? Uh, we drafted. Me. Miss? 
we don't decide where the students go. We talk about the money and how it's spent, but as far as where the students are going to live, you've got to bring that to the school committee. Oh, absolutely. We have brought it to the school committee, and the school committee has been kind enough to include us in their discussions. What we're but proposing is that they be housed at an elementary school in two additional modulars, which would add up to about $40,000. So it is a cost item. No. <laughs> it's not. That's a school committee issue. I, I don't want to cut you off. You can talk about the 100000 or so that Mr. Foskett wants to give to the school committee and that you'll support it, but where this ch children are going to go, while very important issue. We don't decide that. We can't tell the school committee what to do or how to spend their money. We just give it to them. Okay, well, I've placed a flyer, we've placed a flyer on your chairs explaining our reasons for wanting the school, the kids to be in elementary school. Um, we, it's it's going to end up being about a $40,000 cost on the renovation uh, end of it. We do support the plan for renovating the school. We want to make sure that town meeting allocates enough funds to place the, the then fourth graders in an elementary school where they're appropriate. Um, if, the, if, if you'd like me to stop now, I'd be happy to, but please well, do. Well, you can keep talking about the money if you want, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you where we came up with the money. If you look at the capital, the, um, the feasibility study, we looked at the feasibility and found that it would be feasible to do this. Um, the, there is a line item on page 25 of the feasibility study that budgets $400,000 for the modular classrooms. This represents Whose feasibility study? Uh, Mr. Foskett's? Uh, the, the building committee's feasibility study. No, it's not, it's not a, um... Oh, that's not... Okay, well, I think you know where I'm coming from, and I'm going to be back here next year when we're talking yeah. about funding for the second phase of the, uh, of the project, and think about placing elementary students in an elementary school instead of at the, at the middle school, and uh, while it's a cost item, the cost is really low. It's only 0.4% of the whole projected budget, which is really small when you think about how important it is to place our students in an appropriate place for their education. Thank you very much for your attention. Have and we urge time. you to go to the school committee and stress those points. The school, the school committee has been kind enough to include us. We're going to be going Perfect. to the subcommittee and... Um, and I want to thank the members of the school committees that, that are here tonight. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Harrington, Stephen. You had your hand up. You want to talk? You didn't? Okay. Mr. Oh, okay. Stephen Harrington, Precinct 13. I just have a couple of questions. It's just informational. So um, if you give me concise answers, I'd appreciate it. If you look at the capital plan, um, book, page two of three for the capital planning budget for this year. There's an item for flood mitigation grant, FEMA Millbrook, a $300,000 bond. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I, I could just um, someone briefly explain where along the Millbrook that is and, um, you know, just a very brief explanation of the extent of that work. Mr. Rademacher is going to give us that precise information. Uh, Michael Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Uh, the funds that you're uh, referring to are a match. Uh, we, the town recently was received a grant from FEMA of about uh, $2 million, uh, but the town was required to come up with 25% of that. Uh, this line item uh, satisfies that request. The grant money is going to be spent throughout the uh, entire uh, Millbrook to uh, look for improvements, uh, to reduce flooding, as well as to um, make improvements upstream to try to reduce the amount of uh, flow that comes during storm events. So the Millbrook goes like through the school, right behind the school and down like um, near Mill Street and yes. along that area. And it's also up on the bike path, right? As I'm thinking right up on the Lexington side where we had sort of washouts along the bike path over time. Correct. And so do you see like culverts or like a, just a brief so, or, or, or you're not even near to um, planning what to spend? No, correct. We are right now in evaluation stage of looking for areas for improvement. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Moderator, I have another question, and it's um, from the Redevelopment Board's portion, and it's 23 Maple Street. I see $140,000 plus uh, $15,000 um, for uh, renovating on porches and things. And um, my understanding is 23 Maple Street was a school 
building that was turned over to the redevelopment board. It's rented out to a private entity. And um, I just want to know, Mr. Moderator, if, if we include the capital expenditures, as well as any operating expenses for that building, compared to the rents we're receiving, is this, this cash flow positive? I know it's, it's a tough question, so I'm not trying to put you in the spot, I just want to try to oh, understand. Ms. Kowalski was going to answer that, but Charlie can. <laughs> <laughs> Nice and concise. Does that include the hundreds of thousands that we spend through the school budget to transport those students back to their home districts? Your yes, I mean. 23 Maple? Is so it's all part of the property that's uh, managed by the town manager and the redevelopment board. And uh, the town tracks the income for all these buildings, the expenses, as well as the uh, capital expenditures and uh, depreciation and amortization. So it's just the town side expenses. All right, thank you. And then another question on the school side is that um, I'm looking at um, Hardy Windows for $150,000. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I thought Hardy was relatively new. Me too. What's $150,000 that we're spending on windows? Mr. Foskett? <clears throat> for the last uh, three or four years, the, uh, I think the technical term is lint lintels on the windows, the frames around the windows have um, leaked. There's been, uh, uh, been a water damage problem. And uh, it, it occurred well after the um, warranty period, et cetera, on the project. And we can't continue to let the, the building leak, because if we do, then we're going to lose the rest of the investment that we made in the building, since we're spending the $150,000. Leaky windows, I think we can all understand that after this winter. Um, the last one that I have is a $500,000 line item at the Pierce Field Replacement Turf. And my understanding is this is something that's an ongoing expense, and um, you know, every 10 years, not often. And um, I absolutely agree that it needs to be replaced. Um, but has there been any discussion that Pierce Field be placed in an enterprise fund, much like the rink is, and use some of the rental, because it is rented out at times, and use some of the, um, the money that's spent um, for the field uh, through fees, um, even for students at the school, to set up an enterprise fund where this might be an asset that could um, be um, removed sort of as a burden on the schools and also um, um, perhaps, you know, like the rink is, be um, more cost neutral to the town budget. So, Mr. Wonder, is there, who would you even ask about taking an asset and starting to put it into, a, um, into an enterprise fund? Oh. Mr. Foskett can answer you partly, and then Mr. Chapdelaine would be the... Yeah, I, I think... Um, you know, we, the Capital Planning Committee is just responding to the, uh, to the capital request by the school department. And I think the uh, assets under the control of the school committee, so I assume the school committee would be the appropriate body for you to address that with. Mr. Chapdelaine? Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Um, I, I would have to double check the statute, Mr. Harrington, but my understanding is school facilities would not be eligible to become an enterprise fund under state statute that enables enterprise funds. However, uh, I would defer to the school committee or the superintendent. I think they could consider a revolving fund that would uh, take in program fees and then pay for the cost of maintaining the facility on a go forward basis if they so chose. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Fisher? Andrew Fisher, Precinct 6. Um, several neighbors asked uh, me to ask uh, if the Spy Pond um, field concrete bleachers are in the, in the plans to get rehabbed um, and what the timetable is, if, there, if that's the case. Are the Spy Pond bleachers in the plan, Mr. Foskett? He's nodding yes. Oh, Mr. Chapdelaine's going to tell us what the deal is. 
Adam Chapplain, town manager. There was a capital uh, allotment, I believe, three years ago for the assessment of the bleachers, and that's been performed uh, through the work of the DPW and Mike Rademacher. Uh, from that assessment, we're still um, taking a look at what exactly, uh, what kind of work and what kind of project we want to perform, and I think we could um, contemplate putting in a request in uh, either next year or the year after this capital budget. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ciano. Frank Ciano, town meeting member, Precinct 15. A um, couple of questions uh, really uh, 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 due to the neighbors and what Ms. Penetieri was talking about. Uh, the million, um, the million uh, 85 that you're looking for, or that's budgeted here, and I guess the entire Stratton project comes to 12 million 75940, but this year, you're budgeting a million oh eighty five. Do I have that right? And yes, so, <clears throat> uh, of that million eighty five, is that enough money to uh, look into uh, what Ms. Penetieri is talking about, having uh, the students at an elementary school as contrasted to putting putting them at the Audison or 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 what? Again. Where the kids go. Those, is those funds are um, uh, funds for architectural design services and planning uh, for the entire project. And it follows the practice that uh, we normally do with large capital projects where before the project actually starts and the major expenditures get underway, uh, the town or the school department under the uh, guidance of the permanent down building committee uh, plan the project out in detail. And, and I would assume that this uh, planning process will include uh, whatever physical um, entities that are necessary to support the uh, uh, allocation of the students during the construction process. And ultimately, that would be up to the school committee to make that determination, I guess. Do I have that right? Yep, correct. And the rest of the money would, you would be seeking in later years, do I have that also right? Next year. He, he's indicating the rest of the money necessary will be given next year. Sorry, uh, the rest of the money will be uh, proposed to town meeting in the next annual town meeting for spending and you don't, in fiscal year 2017. And you don't expect a tax increase because of this? Did I hear that right? Well, I, um, I think I sh can, can we pop that uh, um, screen? Who's the uh, controller of the... If you flip down to the colorful chart, that, the one, the bar chart, that one there. Yes, thank you. Okay, so this uh, this chart uh, shows uh, non-exempt uh, debt and exempt debt, and you see that the um, let's see the the um, exempt debt is the are the blue bars, are the, the smaller blue bars. And they have a general declining line. There's a slight bump in fiscal year 2018 as, um, as the Stratton uh, bonding is issued and the, and the debt comes online. But basically what we're trying to do with the school department, the town manager, and the permanent town building committee, and the treasurer, is to fit this project in so that the uh, exempt funding matches the decline in existing exempt debt. So, you know, there might be a very small bump, but, but I don't think it'll be noticeable. Thank you. And one last uh, question. There's a note, uh, page eight. Funds, Use the microphone, please. Oh, forgive me. Uh, page eight of your report, funds from sale of assets, 750,000. What, what's gonna be sold? The uh, uh, Capital Planning Committee made a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen uh, what they had a hearing uh, earlier this year on what to do about the uh, the, the, the veteran DA, the DAV. DAV building that the town recently discovered that it owned. And <laughs> so um, the, 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 generally speaking, if the town disposes of a capital asset, it has to use the funds for a capital expenditure, and we're recommending that it be used for the Stratton. Great. 
thank you. I, I just hope the school committee listens to the parents uh, and to what Ms. Penetieri was talking about this evening. We thank all you, do. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Leonard, John. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. Mr. Moderator, Exhibit 3 of the Capital Planning Report, items number 26, 27, 28, roadway reconstruction, roadway reconstruction, sidewalks and curbstones. I'm just curious if any of that money is allotted to put, be put aside for the repairs that have to be done up at Downing Square. Mr. Foskett, or is Mr. Rademacher going to answer that? Can you, can you uh, please repeat the page you were looking at? I, I Exhibit can... 3, items 26, 27, and 28, roadway reconstruction, plus sidewalks and curbstones. Is any of that money allotted to cover the repairs necessary to repair the work that was done up in Downing Square? Rademacher. Uh, Michael Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Um, I guess I'm curious, wh what repairs are you referring to? As it stands right now, sidewalks are cracked, curbstones are leaving the sidewalks, and there is some damage up there to the concrete since the project was completed. And when I've made inquiries, basically the response that I have gotten is the town owns it. Uh, well, if there are repairs necessary, we would make them uh, either through that capital repair, uh, capital budget, or through our operating budget, depending on the severity of the damage. Uh, I'd, I'm unaware of the damage you're referring of, so I'll, I'd have to take a look at it to determine the scope. So I, I would guess what you're basically saying is that on the items that I mentioned, as far as you know, Mr. Rodemaker, none of those that money is set aside for Downing Square as at the present time. Correct. The money is, uh, we have a, a paving uh, program in place that uh, currently does not reflect the repairs you are suggesting. Thank you. Jameson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jamerson, Precinct 12. I too would like to echo the words thanking the Capital Planning Committee and Ms. Lewis for her their long and hard service. Um, on page four and five, particularly page five. So, on the back of the fi finance, fi finance committee report, there's a, the one pager which shows that our total expenditures for the next fiscal year will be 141 million plus 21 million in enterprise funds. Um, in the table four, in the middle of page five, um, a pro forma budget is derived from that the, upon which the 5% that Mr. Foskett has the difficult task of uh, uh, adhering to um, in the expenditure aspect. Um, how do we get to the 130 out of 162 or 141? Maybe you or the deputy town manager could address. You're, you're referring to the um, pro forma budget, 100, 130 million on so, table. So the basically the um, we we take the um, total budget that's in the long range plan. Yes. And uh, there may be a slight discrepancy here because of uh, timing of the and changes in the long range plan. I don't. I'm not sure if the yep. numbers are exactly the same. But um, from that we subtract uh, non exempt. I'm sorry, we subtract exempt spending yes. and we subtract the uh, water sewer uh, debt shift. Okay. And um, that's 11. That, that, that's good enough for me. That's, that's, that's 11. Yeah. Okay. So, that, so, I I just wanna, so I just want to air my um, continued concern that it's not a big number, but the way we appropriate money into 
our override reserve fund and then out of the override reserve fund, it is counted as revenues both times. Okay, just, just to reiterate that concern. Um, I have on the table two on the other, on the other page, Mr. Foskett, maybe you want to stick around. Um, no, that's my prerogative to say I know, sticks Mr. around. I was, I was trying to leave the floor to you, I know. Mr. James. So, uh, subtly. So, um, remind me what the Atena funds are, because for a year or so there, it looked like they almost disappeared, and now they're back. With town meeting, when it authorized the town to lease uh, certain spaces on uh, buildings and um, parks and other properties like that, to... Um, telecommunications companies in order to put um, their transmitting antennas up okay. um, gets gets income and okay. the uh, that money is d well, earmarked for parks and recreation oh okay Excellent. so we we it you know we use it the fund goes down we let it sit for a while it builds up need to move along here okay and uh, <laughs> oh yeah ask the question <laughs> sorry mr. Foskett uh, I, 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 I make a quick comment that um, the um, vehicle replacement program for the police department has been stable at 131,000 for several years now. Um, how we're managed to pull that off, uh, it's only probably Chief Ryan's uh, magical skills of budget management. Um, I note that we are spending $400,000 on the school PC program. How many PCs does that buy? I could buy 1,000. Are you asking Mr. Good? Maybe Mr. Good. You buy the schools, Mr. One. Good. Do you buy the schools PCs? Okay. Might be addressed to Dr. Chesson. Okay. Um, I will be glad to give you the uh, exact. Oh, I'm sorry, no, Laura Chesson, Assistant Superintendent yes. of Schools. Yes. Um, I didn't bring the exact number with me, but if you call my office, I'll be glad to give it. But it, okay. it goes beyond just a few. Um, it's going to um, require the um, upkeep of the machines that are very old at the Audison Middle School, the high school. So there are about seven computer labs that have to be replaced okay. um, for students. There are also so about... not only the purchase, but the installation and yes. some upgrades. Yes, sir. Beyond the fact that the budget covers the software already. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> you gotta let people answer, dude. You ask a question. <laughs> yeah. So um, I do hope that next year when we vote on the Stratton that we'll have the $40,000 that the woman requested earlier. And last but not least, in Exhibit 2, page... Five. Um, very quickly, Mr. Foskett um, alluded. Now, so last year on the floor of town meeting, uh, those who were members then uh, know that I spoke uh, strongly about the fact that I felt that the playground renovation program in town had been um, sadly kicked down the road um, repeatedly, and that CPA might help address that. What I note in the middle here under recreation on the top of those two pages, which is five, page five of seven, is uh, with all due respect to the Capital Planning Committee, each of the, play, each of the, the play yard, playground reservation uh, um, repairs and restorations uh, appear to be tentatively by the italics earmarked for the CPA. I was hoping that we'd have some leverage rather than strictly lobbying the CPA to do these projects so that we would get more projects done not just the same projects. So I hope that um, the Capital Planning Committee continues to take into account the fact that this is a very active town, that our recreation spaces do need continued work, and that we can have maybe some leverage from the monies from the Capital Planning Committee together with the CPA to do that better and faster. That wasn't a question, it was a statement. Thank you much, very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. Mr. Fuller? Uh, Peter Fuller, Precinct 20. I spent some time comparing this year's five-year capital plan with last year's, and I noticed last year's had an item for rink renovations, $1 million projected for 2016. Uh, this year it's not there. It seems to be replaced by a smaller amount, 275000 for rink electrical improvements. So my question is what happens with the other needs of the rink? 
Oh, Mr. Flanagan wants to tell us about that. Andrew Flanagan, Deputy Town Manager. Um, the way we have funded uh, capital improvements at the rink over the past several years is trying to adhere to a policy where just about 50 per the cost share of the debt service is 50% between the rink enterprise and the general fund. Um, given the rate structure currently charged at the rink for uh, the rental of ice time, uh, we weren't able to fund the project in full um, in FY16. Um, working with the recreation director, we determined that um, the electrical upgrades were uh, of the most uh, significant importance uh, moving forward. In the meantime, uh, over the next several years, uh, the Recreation Commission is uh, working with the rink and the director to determine whether or not they want to increase rates in order to fund the next phase. Thanks. I will look for that in a future capital plan. Um, also, echoing a previous speaker, I noticed that uh, the various playground renovations, Bishop, Wellington, Robbins Farm Park, and the Reservoir Beach, they all got kicked down a year in the five-year plan this year compared to last year, uh, presumably to free up capacity for the Stratton School. Um, I hope these things don't get lost in, the, in other needs before they uh, deteriorate to where they're unusable or unsafe. And uh, finally, just a thank you to the Capital Planning Committee for your hard work and you're going to have to roll up your sleeves and work a lot harder next year without Ms. Lewis. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I'm, my name is Steve Revelak, and I am from Precinct 1. Uh, there are a couple of small ticket items, but I had a few questions, so I'm, I'm asking. In the Capital Planning Committee's report, I'm looking at Exhibit 3, page 405. Uh, there are two line items, numbers 11 and 14, uh, which total about $90,000 for software licensing and software upgrades. Uh, I was wondering, Mr. Moderator, uh, are these for commercial software packages? And if so, was there any consideration given to free and, so free and open source software alternatives? The good? Hi, uh, David Good, uh, Chief Technology Officer. Um, the uh, Line item you're speaking of is mainly uh, uh, purchased uh, uh, software. Uh, open source software is uh, used on uh, one of our Linux platforms where we do uh, Linux Mint okay, uh, yeah. in, in the academic areas and uh, a couple of other areas where we uh, do uh, in instructional uh, computing. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I also had a brief question about line item 16, which was town microcomputer program. Um, could someone elaborate on what the town microcomputer program is? Mr. Good. David Good again. Um, we have a uh, four-year refresh policy uh, where we refresh a segment of our uh, uh, computer desktop, printer, uh, peripheral hardware. Okay, good, all right. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Good, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. David Watson, Precinct 5. Uh, another information technology question. Uh, there's a line item for $235,000 for replacement of receivable package. Uh, that sounds like software, uh, and I wanted to hear a little bit more about what that is and why it's so expensive. The Foskett or Mr. Good, either one. <laughs> so um, the town uh, treasurer's uh, department, is the town treasurer here? Steve, do you want to discuss Mr. this? Gilligan, you so, find a big piece Mr. of software? I think uh, Mr. Gilligan is uh, actually on top of this, so since he's here, you can get it directly from the treasurer. Thank you, Mr. Foskett. Would you please repeat your question? Uh, Who are you? Stephen Gilligan, town treasurer and collector. 
Uh, in the informa information technology section of the capital budget, there's $235,000 allocated for replacement of receivable package. Yes. And I wanted to hear more about what that is and why it costs so much. Uh, well, I'll be happy to explain <laughs> that to you. The Town of Arlington um, the Treasurer's Office utilizes a pack package called ICS. Uh, that is the integrated collection system, and it is the software application package whereby all billing and collections for real estate tax, motor vehicle excise tax, parking tickets, water and sewer billing, and other local receipts are handled. It is a billing and collection package. That billing and collection package was designed um, quite a long time ago. At the time, it was customized for the town. It was proprietary, and it was cutting edge. Uh, it is uh, no longer cutting edge. It is incredibly user-friendly. It ain't broke, but uh, it is 20 years old. Uh, it is beginning to acquire risk with respect to its operations and management and its support. The $230,000 is a placeholder for the replacement of that software package. And quite frankly, um, to give you a little scope, uh, replacing a software package that receives and collects and bills for all the town revenues uh, for $230,000 is a bargain considering in the next 10 years we will be collecting $1.2 billion in revenue. And I think we need uh, an appropriate package to do that. And has there been investigation of what the replacement with uh, more current software is going to cost? Yes, th that investigation is commencing. The town is retaining the services of a specialized consultant to assist us in the analysis and create analysis of need, as well as the creation of the request for proposal that will be issued prior to the end of this calendar year. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lobel. Josh Lobel, Precinct 8. Um, based on some of the comments that came up in our precinct meeting before uh, town meeting commenced, I have a couple of quick questions. One is one of the items in the capital plan is $50,000 for sidewalk repair. <clears throat> and I'm just wondering how, how much repair that is and how you decide how to appropriate that, uh, given I think the, the substantial need. Mr. Rademacher. Uh, Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works. That amount is, um, is sorely underfunded, quite honestly, for the amount of sidewalk work we need to do. Currently, it is used to just augment when we're doing a paving project, uh, if there is associated curb or, or walk work that needs to get uh, performed with the paving project, we utilize those funds in addition to some of the paving funds. We are going through a process currently of evaluating the entire town's uh, sidewalk and curb inventory to determine a, a more realistic number to bring the sidewalk uh, up to um, appropriate okay. condition. Do you have an, an idea of the order of magnitude of that? I mean, is it it's uh, maybe more like a million or something? It'll be significantly more, yeah. but the, the report is not complete. OK, all right. And then um, my next question was that um, given this past winter and several past winter uh, snow situations, I'm wondering if you've given any consideration to getting a sidewalk plow for Mass Ave or being able to enable better clearing at corners and things like that. Mr. Rademacher. Uh, Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Uh, we did actually get a sidewalk plow uh, last year. It unfortunately um, was in an accident uh, in one of our storms and we weren't able to use it for the entire winter, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but I do expect when it's repaired, it'll help our operations significantly. Okay, great. All right. I mean, it just—it seems to me that that rather than thinking this past year was an anomaly, we probably should be planning that this is more typical. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Stop it. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Roland Chaput, Precinct 12. I was kind of hoping that I would get my answer from the comments that came from the treasurer, but 
it wasn't quite what I was looking for, so I need to ask the question, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> there was a new series of packages that I think were announced by the, the town manager just uh, maybe uh, several months ago. Essentially, what they're going to allow you to do is look at town expenses and incomes from your home. Great idea. From an internet standpoint, I'm so glad to see this happening. I've looked at it a couple of times. I think Open Checkbook, isn't that one of them? Yeah. It, it needs more work, and I'm sure you're working on that. It, it makes a lot of sense. I, I'm, in, I'm involved with one of the, uh, the, the committees here in town, and we have to rely currently on the information coming from the controller's office, which is fine when it gets to us, but it would be nice if I could just, on my own system at home, access where we're spending the money in that particular account. I th I'm hoping it'll happen before soon. I'm assuming it doesn't. Right now it doesn't. And of course, I, I can't find the money in here. Where, how, how did you pay for all that? How did you pay for open checkbook? Yes. Ah, Mr. Chaplain. Adam Chaplain, town manager. Open checkbook um, was uh, funded in its development uh, and first uh, implementation by a grant from the state under the Community Innovation Challenge Grant. In future years, if we want to maintain the service, we will need to contemplate uh, funding for licensing uh, on a continuing basis. Sir. Yep. Christopher Moore, Precinct 14. Uh, move, motion to terminate debate. Last guy on the list. We have a motion to terminate debate. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? That is a two-thirds vote, and I so declare. Um, we have now before us the recommended vote of the Capital Planning Committee. Uh, it involves bonding, so it's a two-thirds vote, so we're going to use our clickers. We're going to vote all the recommendations at once. It's for $18,221,000. Mr. Renault, will you be ready? So if you want to vote yes, you'll press one. If you want to vote no, you'll press two. And we're ready. So go ahead and vote. One for yes, two for no. We have 188 in the affirmative, two in the negative. The vote passes. And that closes Article 24. Chap Sir, excuse me, Mr. Foskett. You now bring us to Article 26. Uh, Mr. Moderator, move favorable action on Article 26. Okay, so anyone wish to talk about the sewer budget, the water and sewer reconstruction budgets, these are the same budgets we vote every year. Anyone want to talk about it? No. Mis seeing none, Mr. Monroe. Well, you're not Monroe. You're Renault. Are you ready, sir? Again, it's a bonding issue, so we have to use two-thirds, so to make bond council happy, we get a, a numerical tally. Okay, so if you're ready, please vote one for yes, two for no, and you can vote. Okay, we have 198 in the affirmative. We have zero in opposition. It's a unanimous vote, and I so declare it. That closes Article 26, and that brings us to Article 27. Sir. Sir. Article 27. Can we take a vote on Article 25? 
No, we, we tabled 25. We're going to do 27. Yeah. So Article 27, this is the opposite of the SOAR vote. This is how we get our water in, water in Maine. It's the standard every year we vote this money. Anyone want to talk about water main replacements? No, Mr. Mo oh, Mr. Harrington wants to. So um, Stephen Harrington, Precinct 13. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not coming up here to say anything bad about the water main replacements, obviously. But um, if you look at what the MWRA says we use in water, it's like 1.3 billion whatever it is. And if you look and you look at the um, uh, actual bills, and you actually get all the bills and look at them and add them up, it's under a billion whatever is. And so there's a 30 or 40% difference between what we're actually using and what we're actually getting charged from MWRA for. And if anyone's looked at their water bill, it's not a small amount of money for everyone's pockets. You can imagine a 30% decrease. Where's that 300 million gallons of water going? It's not, and it's not leaks. So you, you saw out in um, LA last summer, they had a water main break for you know, like eight hours, it swamped it. That was 20 million gallons. This is like an LA problem every month. So I don't buy that it's leaks. And I'm just wondering, Mr. Moderator, if someone has looked in that, I, I, th there's this huge discrepancy between what we're getting charged from MWRA and what we're actually using. I think Mr. Rademacher has a story about the missing water. Uh, Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Uh, the unaccounted for water, which is uh, what we, um, we calculated as, is, can be made up of many different uh, components, uh, leaks being one of them. Uh, unaccounted for water can be the difference between what an old meter registers uh, compared to a, a new meter. Uh, there can be a percentage of uh, water uh, there that is not uh, billed. Um, we have water that's supplied to town buildings, which obviously doesn't show up in the billing, and that um, would be a portion of the water that you're referring to. Uh, so we're, we're trying to um, hone in on that percentage difference um, with the leak detection, replacing our water meters, and keeping a better tabs on water that's used at um, municipal buildings. Yeah, Mike was kind enough to give me um, a list of every water meter in town, and so I could access it, including the town meters. And um, it's, it's, I think it's on the uh, MWRA end. And I don't know if anyone, Mr. Moderator, um, has worked with them to, because we're not the only community. Mm -hmm. There was actually a news story about, I think it was Milton, where they had the same type of thing, where there was 30% or so uh, discrepancy between the water actually used and the water that the MWRA was charging for. And you know, this is a significant amount of money for everyone in town. So I don't know if there's anyone who's been um, trying to work through the MWRA end of it, because you know, I, I, I can't imagine that it's such a large, you know, that, that it's so bad. Or unless you know, you've got things that show that you know, slow meters or you know, the meters are you know, pretty easy, old technology. So. I, you know, it's, it's hard to buy that it's a leak in, in meters alone. Uh, well, we do, we do keep in contact with the MWRA, and they are required to uh, calibrate their meters that they sell, use to sell us water. So there is a, somewhere out there where this uh, unaccounted for water is going. I, I do believe a good portion of it is in the older meters. I do believe that there is a, a significant portion in, in leaks, you know, a, a lot of small leaks will add up and leaks aren't always in the town's uh, water mains. They are often in uh, service connections to homes. Those are a little bit more difficult to find. Uh, but we are uh, being more diligent with leak surveys that we, com we complete every year now to try to root out those uh, unforeseen problems. And I do believe that uh, when we get our meter replacement program done, uh, we will see a significant um, or, or another reduction in that unaccounted for water. We do, we do a calculation every year to determine the true unaccounted for water. And this next, this past year, or this most recent year, our number was closer to about 23 or 
24%, which is down from uh, a, a high of about 30%, maybe um, two or three years ago. Thank you very much. Mr. Hainer. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Bill Hainer, Precinct 2. How many old water meters have we still got out there? I thought we were, we made that change a couple of years ago. Uh, Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works. The project uh, a few years ago was a project to install automatic uh, meter reading technology. It didn't replace the meters, but it replaced the technology by which we read the meters. So now it's an automated system. We don't have folks going to each individual home to, to read meters. That comes to us wirelessly on a regular basis. Uh, this next uh, round, which was funded last year, I believe, in, uh, in the budget, uh, will be to actually replace the meters themselves. For you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, so when I got the electronic one, didn't I get a new meter at the same time? No. So uh, the, yeah, I, there might have been a handful here or there, but it was not a town-wide project. But so this is. So when will this? When do you pers uh, think this is going to be we, done by the, we, for the we, whole time? We hope to get started with the replacement in the next few months, and, and, it'll, and it'll be about a two-year process. And is this a charge to my water bill, or does the town pick this up, or the state? The funding uh, for the meter replacement is being paid for out of the, um, the enterprise fund, and it's covered in uh, the water and sewer budget. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Deist. Okay, does anyone else want to speak to water, meter, water pipes? Okay, seeing none, we're ready for a vote. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Moore. Or no? Okay, again, one is yes, two is no, and we're ready. Go ahead and vote. We have 190 in the affirmative and one in the negative. The vote passes, and so declare it, and that closes Article 27. Mr. Foskett. Moderator Charles Foskett, Precinct 8. Um, I, I move that we take Article 25 off the table. Motion well, to take Article 25 off the table. All in favor, please say yes. 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 Opposed? So moved. Mr. To Foskett, 25 is off the table. We have the recommended vote of the Finance Committee to rescind borrowing authorization from prior years. I don't know if they want to speak to it, but basically they don't want the right to borrow all this money anymore. Mr. Gilligan. They've given up 4,338,000. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, town meeting members, uh, what this vote does is it rescinds prior votes that this body took over past years for money that was authorized to be borrowed but was, in fact, not borrowed. By rescinding these votes and these dollar amounts based on the projects that you see, that frees up debt capacity for the town and helps us to maintain our AAA bond rating from the credit rating agencies. This is debt that we carry on the books even though it was never borrowed, and we need to take it off our books. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Moderator. Mr. Jameson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. Um, so uh, most of this I, I don't really care about, although it seems like we should take advantage of things we authorized previously. Is there a reason why we don't want to utilize these funds for any project? I mean, yes, the water because and sewer seems it, like a logical. The, in any vote to borrow, the, the, under state law, the vote stipulates specific legislation under which the money can be borrowed and used. The money may not be used for any other purpose. 
Well, Mr. And that, that's, okay, that's so for example, if you look at the Dallin School, the Dallin School dollar amount, which is relatively small, that project has been closed out. Yep. The vote called for the borrowing to be used specifically for the Dallin School. It may not be used for any other school. However, freeing up that, that $177,000 allows that money to be added for other school construction purposes at a future vote. So this money frees up debt capacity. This money can be voted again in subsequent Warren articles for similar purposes. And, and this, so, so, this so. type of a vote is also negated by the previous vote that town meeting just took that says under the capital budget and for previous for borrowing for this year where money is freed up it can be used for like-minded projects so we're also taking steps to eliminate these kind of votes in the future so let's let's get so in in the water and sewer ones here yes um we didn't borrow correct. this amount correct so let's take um the 200 thousand for the MWRA water by rescinding that can we now borrow that from the MWRA that and that's exactly what's been done when the town votes an appropriation for either sewer facility construction or reconstruction or water facility construction or reconstruction it authorizes the appropriation and the expenditure an example of what you're talking about also occurred with last year's vote to do the same I work hand in glove with the town manager and the director of public but works wait to to acquire MWRA funding, which, would, which then frees up town money. The vote is still required, it just comes out of a different pot. Okay, so let's skip down to the Stratton. $710,000 was appropriated for work on the Stratton at some point in time in the past, okay? Yes. Can we, is that money still available for use? That in, money in, will be available for use, but it can't stop. be used in this borrowing because it was a, for a specific purpose as delineated in that vote in past years. Okay, so I, I, I remain confused, but you're the treasurer. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It, it frees up debt, it frees up money, and it can be voted at a future, future date. Okay, anyone else want to ask about giving money up? Seeing none. All right. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Gilligan. Mr. Renault, when you're ready. So a yes vote is one, a no vote is two. If you vote yes, we're giving up four million three hundred some odd thousand dollars. So go ahead and vote one for yes, two for no. We have 187 in the affirmative, two in the negative. It's a positive vote, and I so declare it. And that closes Article 25. Mr. Fawcett, do you want to take all those articles off the table? Moderator Charles Fawcett, Precinct 8. I move that articles. Uh, article 7 and articles 12 through 23 uh, be taken off the table. All in favor of taking all those articles off the table, please say yes. yes. Opposed? All those articles are back on the table. That brings us back to Article 7. Article 6, Article 7. Have before us Two recommended votes, one of the Redevelopment Board and one of the Board of Selectment for zoning bylaw and regular town bylaw amendments, regulations of posted event notices. So these two things work in conjunction with each other, but they will be separate votes. So, Mr. Harrington, what do you got? Well, does the Selectman want to present or does the ARB want to present first? Go ahead. We'll get you. Good, 10 minutes left. Okay. We have a motion to adjourn and seconded. All in favor of adjourning at this point, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. In my opinion it is the no vote. Mr. Burnell. Good evening. Andrew Burnell, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. 
Uh, this proposed bylaw creates a defined set of signs, removes them from being subject to zoning, uh, makes the approval guidelines more clear, and adds a section of these guidelines uh, out of that, <coughs> excuse me, out of the zoning bylaw. It's fairly straightforward, makes signage in town uh, much easier for a certain specific set of purposes. Thank you. Okay. And who wants to present for the selectman on their position? Or does anyone want to? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Kevin Greeley, Chairman. Uh, our motion is the same. It's just uh, if, if uh, the redevelopment board's motion passes, um, uh, we support that therefore the, there would be the bylaw change, correct, Doug? Correct. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so it's, I mean, it's really we're, we're supporting what the redevelopment board is doing. If that passes, then it requires a change in the bylaw, which is what we are recommending to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. Thank you very much, Sean Harrington, Precinct 15. Um, I just need to double check with town uh, council. I'm proposing an amendment to Article 7. Um, this is to both the Board of Selectmen's uh, recommendation or er, uh, change in the uh, <coughs> zoning boards. Um, basically, we'll be adding two groups uh, to the uh, list of uh, organizations and persons here, where it originally says signs erected by a person or nonprofit, it would say, uh, now it would now say signs erected by a person, town committee, student organization, or nonprofit. Now, I know people are going to say, well, they already have, or, you know, protection under this and all that, but I don't think that redundancy is necessarily a bad thing when we're talking about students. Um, we just had a group of uh, high school kids here, and and many people here who are active with student organizations, they should be protected under notices as well when they have car washes to raise money for their uh, organizations or any organization for that matter that is extracurricular for, um, in the school system. Town committees basically are uh, commissions uh, and what have you. I think it's basically as straightforward as the article. I just want to make sure that students are protected under this as well as our town's hardworking commissions and committees. Thank you very much. Do I have a second on his motion? Seconded. Seconded. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Klein. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Christian Klein, Precinct 10. I'm the proponent of this article. Um, I also serve on the Zoning Board of Appeals and on the uh, governing board of the Friends of Robbins Farm Park, but I'm not here to speak on behalf of either of those organizations. Um, I would like to thank the membership for uh, postponing this from last Monday's night uh, hearing as I was unavailable at that time. So if I get the next slide, please. So what is this article about? Um, essentially, there are lots of events that happen around town all the time, and we find out about them because we see something mounted on a pole that tells us it's happening. Um, every single time that happens, it's a bylaw, it's a zoning bylaw, um, oh, sorry. it's a violation of the zoning bylaws. Um, you're not allowed to post signs like that anywhere in town, and it happens all the time. So when there are events that are being sponsored by nonprofit groups, um, such as the Jason Russell House, somebody loses a pet, somebody has a yard sale, presently none of those are allowed. Um, but these notices are current in our community and we use them all the time. Have the next. The article is also about providing a set of rules and regulations that set standards for what's appropriate and clarify that irresponsible posting should remain illegal. So things like this, so what is not included? Nope, sorry, you can go ahead. So what's not included? Commercial notices are not included in this article. So this does not change any kind of commercial notices, does not allow businesses to all of a sudden put up signs around town. Uh, commercial notices are still governed by the zoning bylaw. So whether it is a, there has been some discussion about having uh, some kind of regulation regarding menu boards for commercial applications, that is not a part of this at all. 
uh, posting of work job opportunities is still not legal. It would not be affected by this. And signs of a political nature are not at all affected by this. That still remains um, a legal use um, of free speech. Next, please. So why is this going into two sets of bylaws? Why is there going to be two votes on the same article? Essentially, there's a bit of confusion in the way the bylaws are written currently. So Title V of the General Bylaws, which governs the use of private property, it was essentially set up to regulate billboard signs and, outboard and other outdoor advertising devices. And that's enforced through the Board of Selectmen. Regular signs are, are under the zoning bylaws, and they affect primarily buildings and property, and it's enforced by inspectional services. Um, so the problem is now if you see a sign that's up on a telephone pole, who do you call? And the correct answer is actually you call the building department. Um, but it seems really odd that that's the building department's problem. So what about notices? So notices are signs. Um, they're an everyday part of our community. They serve a purpose, and they're not legal, but everybody still uses them. So why do we sort of have this weird situation, let's just go ahead and make what we want to do legal. So we need to change both bylaws. So as was outlined by the uh, Redevelopment Authority, the zoning bylaw, we're gonna create a definition for what a notice is. Um, and it's a very limited definition as to what a notice is. And then we're gonna say it doesn't belong in the zoning bylaws anymore. And then you have to reference the general bylaws. So what that then we go to the new general bylaw, which creates a definition, and it creates a process for how we can regulate these, a process, and it allows the notices that we like and that follow the set of standards and creates an actual path for enforcement that's already existing under Title V of the general bylaws. And that's the strategy we're trying to follow here. So why should you vote to approve? Um, notices are how we most efficiently communicate with our neighbors and community. Uh, we have a lot of ways to communicate online. We can communicate through the newspapers. But if you want to find out what's happening in your neighborhood, if you walk around your neighborhood, you'll see the signs and you know what's happening in your neighborhood. Um, notices keep us well informed. They, approving these regulations and standards will set a basic set of expectations and guidelines for posting. And it allows us to have some kind of enforcement. Um, the, there is a draft set of regulations that is a part of the um, Selectman's report, which basic, which um, I don't know if you've already had an opportunity to peruse them, but essentially what it does is it states that notices have to be constructed of some kind of a resilient material. They must be erected in a way that's removable and not dangerous. Um, they may not be erected earlier or removed later than allowed in the table that is a part of this notice. Um, they can't exceed the areas. So essentially, we're telling you how big a sign, an individual sign can be, and then also how large your sort of overall campaign can be in terms of signs so that people aren't putting up hundreds of signs. Um, there's, you have to include the name of the sponsoring person and organization, the date of the, th of the event, and a contact phone number, email address, so that if there's a sign out there that is staying out too long, you know who to contact, um, or the town knows, knows who to contact. Um, notices can't be placed on trees, they can't be placed on private property without the consent of the owner, um, they can't be placed on public property without approval from the Board of Selectmen's office. Uh, town departments can establish individual policies for display of notices on public property, such as the um, property that falls under the Recreation Department. They would be able to establish their own guidelines for how that would work. Um, and notices cannot be erected in a way that limits visibility at corners along public and private ways. Um, one question that will probably come up is, well, what about telephone poles? Because they are private property um, with easements. Um, I have spoken with a representative from um, Verizon, who is the owner of the poles. Um, their primary concern is that the poles not get damaged. Um, they're not concerned about having a sign in the way of them doing utility work because, frankly, they'll just take it down. Um, and they'll probably do it in a brusque manner. But they are hoping that if people are posting things on their property, that they're doing it you know, with devices that can readily be removed and don't cause permanent damage to the poles. Um, and that is their primary concern. So hopefully um, this makes sense to everyone and we can vote forward on the both um, votes that need to occur to make this happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It's past 11 and we can entertain the motion to adjourn now if you want. All in favor of adjourning, please say yes. Yes. 
Opposed? Okay, any notices of reconsideration? Mr. Tosti has given me a notice of reconsiderations for Articles 24, 25, 26, and 27. Any other notices for reconsideration? Seeing none, be sure to put your clickers back to get in the button bins, and we'll see you Monday night. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie.